Here we're going to take a closer look at activation energy in enzyme catalyzed reactions and uh, what is meant by the word exothermic. Most biological reactions are exothermic in that at the end um, some extra energy, some net energy is actually released. So some things to keep in mind here are that chemical reactions uh, are where reactants are converted to products and often an enzyme plays a role right here in the middle. If you've studied cellular respiration or photosynthesis, you know that there are tons of really important enzymes like Rubisco and uh, other various enzymes that are important for metabolic reactions. Salivary amylase, you've heard of trypsin, pepsin, proteases, lipases, a whole bunch of different enzymes. Um, reactants need some energy in order to be converted. So although the reaction is exothermic where we end up with some a net release in the beginning there still needs to be some energy that's actually input and that's called the uh, activation energy so that energy that needs to go in is the energy required to break bonds in a reactant or to join them together uh, so later energy is given out when these new bonds are actually formed so uh, where should we start right here here's an enzyme that's his active site right there look at that so cute okay so right here when we're looking at a, a typical graph showing an enzyme catalyzed reaction um, the x-axis is showing the progress of the reaction and then this is the relative energy level shown on the y-axis here we have the substrate and it's going to be converted to the products in the end this is the energy that's required to normally make the reaction actually happen it's called the activation energy and this is what it looks like when there is no enzyme present and in the presence of an enzyme like one of these bad boys right here this is actually going to help to lower the activation energy so when the substrate combines with this enzyme it forms a temporary complex that weakens the bonds and allows um, the reaction to proceed with less energy than is normally required so that's the activation energy with the enzyme actually present and here's the net energy released by the reaction. So notice that in a regular reaction with no enzyme, here's the energy level at the end. And with the enzyme present, here's the energy level at the end. So notice that the end goal, the end result of this amount of energy that's actually uh, released, it doesn't change. So the enzyme is only actually reducing the activation energy, the energy required to get over this initial hump right here. And so here's a, a quick little box. The interaction of the substrate with the active site actually weakens its bonds, putting it in a temporary it's a enzyme substrate complex that's formed together. Actually weakens the bonds, putting it in a transition state with less energy, making it easier to break down. So that's it really quickly. You should be able to recognize a graph that looks like this. If the products end up at a higher energy level, then we call that an endothermic reaction. But for most biological um, reactions, you're going to end up with a graph that looks like this, where the final state is at a lower energy level than the initial level that we started off with. Okay.